Hello and welcome to the third and final of our midweek Advent services. I sure hope you've enjoyed them. We've enjoyed putting them together. And so, let us come together. Let us prepare to worship Almighty God. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which lights everyone, comes into the world. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Let us pray. O God of compassion, you carry us as we journey through this season of Advent, and as we journey through this life, you even know our thoughts before we do. And so forgive us for our bad thoughts, and guide us through our good ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us hear the word of God from the Gospel of Luke in the second chapter, beginning to read at the eighth verse. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And so it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We consider now the angels' carol. I'd like to begin with a little poem by Anne Weems. It's um, entitled, An Angel-Filled Advent. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Advent came filled with angels and alleluias? Wouldn't it be perfect if we were greeted on these December mornings with a hovering of heavenly hosts, tuning their harps and brushing up on their fa la 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 las Wouldn't it be incredible if their music filled our waking hours with the promise of peace on earth, and if each Advent night we dreamed of nothing but goodwill. Wouldn't we be ecstatic if we could turn the, take those angels shopping or trim the tree 
or have them hold our hands and dance through our houses decorating. And oh, how glorious it would be to sit in church next to an angel and sing our Hark the Heralds. What an advent that would be. What Christmas spirit we could have. An angel-filled advent has so many possibilities. But in lieu of that, perhaps we can give thanks for the good earthly joys we have been given and for the earthy, earthly angels that we know who do such a good job of filling our advent with alleluias. Anne Weems from her, her book of poems entitled Kneeling in Bethlehem. The carol Gloria in Excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest and upon earth peace among those whom he favors, or people of good will. What a fascinating touch that the multitude of the heavenly host proclaims peace on earth. The song of the angels grows even stronger as one angel appears, a symbol of God's presence, and the angel does not retire, but is joined by others who come to seal and celebrate the tidings he has brought. You know, it's an interesting play on words, especially if we consider the King James translation, Heavenly Host, which could also mean army. Imagine an army celebrating peace. Such a heavenly twist on things is made surely to teach us that we alone on earth are scarcely capable of achieving peace ourselves. Let's face it, throughout our history, we haven't had the best track record. Society today has done its level best to achieve peace by uh, subliminally putting religion on the bottom shelf of human experience, whether it be by abolishing prayers in schools or in the legislative assemblies of our country or by a nagging insistence that Christian signs and symbols are now to be found offensive by some or merely tolerated by others, thereby relegating the faith as another consumer product, as religious sociologists informed us nearly a generation ago. However, something drastic continues to happen on our continent. I remember the events of September the 11th, over 20 years ago, and how those events had brought, in the midst of shock and suffering, a return to basic faith and thinking. And as I think of events that have happened on this continent in the past number of years, the fact that there are, in, in the United States today, 600 mass shootings per year and the fact that it's so easy to obtain these automatic weapons walk into a Walmart you can walk out with one instead of the the government making it mandatory that only those weapons would be consigned to the armed forces a friend of mine and a colleague grew up in Southern California and he said they wonder why there's so much violence on the streets with a liquor store on one corner and a gun shop on the next corner. Everywhere you go. And then, of course, with the pandemic, we were leveled. And I think many people returned to faith during that time. The evidence was clear with, with uh, ministers 
churches that posted service on YouTube and Facebook and other means of social media, people following those services numbering up to the thousands. So something drastic has happened. To many people, the Christmas story will no longer be a mere fairy tale, a wonderful story that provides maybe a brief escape from the real world we face, a meaningful experience of the good news of the season, however, must inevitably involve entering imaginatively into the story, feeling the wonder of God's grace, and considering the choices that the story puts before us. And if there's any time we need, the gifts of this season of hope and peace and joy and love it is in these days. It is in these days. I give thanks to God for the new awakening the angel's carol has given me. Peace with God is the grand necessity of a fallen world. To bring in this and all the other peace in its train was the prime errand of the Savior to this earth, and along with it, heaven's whole goodwill to all. The divine complacency on a new footing descends to rest upon all people, as upon the Son himself, in whom God is well pleased. Glory be to God. Amen. Unto him that loves us and is able to keep us from falling, be ascribed in the church by Christ Jesus all glory and honor, dominion, power, and blessing, world without end. Amen. Our prayers of intercession, let us pray. At the birth of Christ, our Savior, the angel, sang of peace on earth. In the name of him who is the Prince of Peace, let us pray for peace. O eternal God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, we bring to you in prayer our troubled world. We pray for peace in the Ukraine. We pray for peace in Central America. In every land where race strives with race, religion with religion, class with class. Give peace, O God. Give peace again. We pray for the victims of war, not only those in uniform, but all those caught up in the maelstrom of violence and destruction, the widows and orphans, the aged and helpless little children, the maimed and blinded and those whose wounds are of the mind and soul. Give peace, O God. Give peace again. We pray for the peacemakers, those who seek just and lasting solutions to age-old hatreds and problems, those who work for social betterment in the face of the housing crisis and inflation and increasing hunger to feed the hungry, to raise up the poor, to give hope to the refugee, above and beyond the fallibility of human counsel, let the forces of peace conquer the forces that make and that love war. 
Give peace, O God. Give peace again. O God, who has made of one blood all the nations of the earth and who loves all your children as you love us, teach us the unity of your family and the breadth of your love. Hasten the time when the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of your Christ, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and who was born a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, to people of good will. Hear now our prayers through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, now let thy servants depart in peace according to thy word. For our eyes have seen the salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine own Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Almighty Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect rest. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is Thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. And after greeting one another, let us depart in great joy.